Hello, my name is Alexis Abril, and I'm a member of the technical partnerships team here at GitHub. I help partner teams develop functionality that complements our capabilities, specifically around compute-based products such as GitHub Actions and Apps. GitHub Actions has a broad reach and functionality, but we're going to focus on the capabilities centered on continuous deployment. If you're not yet familiar with GitHub Actions, here's a quick overview. Actions are how CI CD pipelines are automated within the GitHub platform. This can be utilized to run tests or link code each time a pull request is created or a branch is merged. The way I view Actions is as a customizable workflow, automating well defined tasks. Each time an action is invoked, we review the list of tasks and provision a virtual machine for each job that has been declared. Typically, these are for common tasks, such as linting or testing code. However, we're essentially talking about executing code when interesting events occur. What the code does is open to the creativity of the author. If you're looking for inspiration or what functionality may be available today, our partner ecosystem, the open source community, and individual contributors are creating new actions every day to accelerate, solidify, and secure your development lifecycle. These are all available via the GitHub Marketplace, bringing enhancements to all facets of your dev lifecycle. This leads me into where I wanna to focus today. A while back, we introduced environments to GitHub Actions. Environments are essentially a mechanism to categorize tasks within a workflow. They act as a tag for each job, associating them with levels of access, such as dev staging and production, or can also be used to denote geographic regions. Perhaps there is an additional deployment step for the Western region versus the Eastern. Environments allow for further flexibility in breaking down the most effective automation for publishing your software. There are a couple of notable pieces of functionality that come with environments. You can attach secrets or require a number of reviewers depending on each environment. Most recently, we introduced environment protection rules. These are integrations that allow the developer to define specific conditions before allowing a deployment to proceed. Perhaps you manage an enterprise with hundreds of repositories in an organization. There may be a need for a review of an ancillary system before a new deployment is published. This could be due to checking if dependencies are aligned in the target system, various teams needing to sign off, or even verifying if licensing is correct. Some of these rules can be automated while others are manual. Environment protection rules allow for the ability to customize how you want your continuous deployment to be defined. To visualize, here we have a simple workflow to test, build, and deploy some code. GitHub Action workflows are written in YAML with a number of events that can trigger execution and additional properties to define how the execution takes place. For this demo, we're using the workflow dispatch event, which allows us to manually execute through the GitHub web interface. Each job in this workflow is a separate virtual machine instance. As such, these can be run in serial or parallel, and you have the freedom to define the image the virtual machine is run on. I'll be using the Ubuntu latest image for each of our jobs defined. I'm also executing bash script within my workflow. Actions can be inline, such as you see here, or point to a file. In many instances, this file may reside within the GitHub marketplace and allows for executing code from a number of frameworks and languages. Let's take a look at running our sample action. I'm going to invoke this by clicking on the actions tab in our repo, selecting the workflow I'd like to run and clicking run workflow. We just need a moment for the virtual machine to be provisioned. And now we have a new run in our list. Clicking into the workflow allows us to view the execution as it progresses. This particular action is executed as a serial set of jobs, each with a unique virtual machine instance. Granted, as we're executing no ops, this would have been more efficient in a single instance, but the moral of the story is that you have the capability to isolate execution as you deem appropriate. This simple action has completed successfully and deployed to both our staging and production environments. You can additionally click into each job to see the CLI output which comes in very handy when you need to debug. Taking a look at a more complex workflow, we have similar execution, but now we're gonna to deploy to multiple environments in parallel. 
Action environments are a conceptual wrapper for your deployment targets. We may have different secrets for production east versus west, or perhaps we need a rolling deployment based on time. With actions, we don't dictate or necessarily recommend how you should deploy, but rather offer the platform features necessary for you to publish your software securely and efficiently. That's a bit of a crash course in actions, but we've arrived at the core of our story. First, let's take a look at a new workflow. This has similar steps as we've seen before, but I've added a canary environment prior to staging. Now, I've mentioned environments and some of their rules, but let's take a look at what that really means. In the repo settings, there's a section aptly titled environments. In here, you can see the different environments described in our workflows and add some customization to each. Required reviewers and waiting for a defined period of time are two rules you can protect your deployments with. The true customization is here now with environment protection rules. This is a custom integration where a third party application can listen for a deployment being triggered, execute logic, and decide whether the deployment should proceed. The vehicle for this integration is via GitHub apps. We have a couple of apps available for the Barbecue Beats demo organization, and I'm going to select the Fried Okra app to govern our deployments. You can enable one or many of these protection rules, and these can be configured uniquely per environment. For Production East, I'm going to add a 60 second delay on deployments so that we don't have a major interruption of service. Triggering this workflow manually creates a flow diagram we're familiar with at this point, but I wanna draw your attention to the console underneath the visualization. The Fried Okra application is notified for each deployment and is reporting back after deciding how to proceed. For the Canary environment, Fried Okra has decided the observed error rates are below a 1% threshold and has chosen to approve this deployment. A similar logic has been invoked for staging with a 50% threshold and is proceeding to deploy to our production regions. Production has a slightly different logic. We are verifying that resources have been properly allocated and, if confirmed, proceeding with the deployment. East has also been approved, however, is awaiting the completion of our 60 second wait timer before continuing. The thresholds and logic executed are arbitrary. It's important to note that we are essentially just executing three steps. We're asking a third party if we can deploy, the third party is executing logic to decide, and then finally approving or rejecting our deployment. There are already many applications utilizing this functionality today, and you can combine these apps from our partner ecosystem with custom apps you develop to compose a more robust CI-CD pipeline.